Hello and welcome to another installment of my Keyshot Quick Composition tutorial series which started last week focusing on the iPhone 12 composition. In this tutorial we're going to be making this beautiful shot of a vase on a podium with one light source off to the side making a very dramatic, high contrast, moody shot that's great for these kind of products but also many different product categories as well. Loads of room for customization in this so hopefully you'll learn some uh, new tricks um, from me. Before we jump into this tutorial, however, I do have some incredibly exciting news to share with you. So I'm going to pass over to pre-recorded Liam uh, to take you through the details. My friends, it's been a long time coming, but through my business, Sector Creative, I am finally selling rendering assets to help you with product visualization in Keyshot. Our first product, the Long Range Interior Keyshot 10 package, is now available to purchase through Gumroad. In this package, you'll find an absolutely jaw-dropping, near-photorealistic interior scene in Keyshot, complete with all the materials and lighting you need to simply drag and drop your product in and let the scene do the work. Also, by leveraging studios in Keyshot, we've been able to build in a number of different variations that you can toggle between at the click of a button. For example, you can change the lighting from an indirect day to a direct dusk. You can also change the materials, which is the concrete, plaster, and the wood from a lovely light mode, which is fresh, to a dark mode, which is a little bit more moody. We've also built in eight cameras, which gives you some ideas on where you can position your product in the scene, for example, against a wall or on the dining table. We are absolutely over the moon with the quality of this Keyshot file. It's probably the best looking file I've ever worked on, and you can own and use it. I'll leave the link to the Gumroad listing down in the description below for anyone who's interested in taking their Keyshot rendering game up to the next level. Thank you very much for listening to this short message. I hope you're excited. For now, back to the video. All right, so as with the iPhone, I've already done the materials for this scene. Uh, we're purely gonna work on the composition, uh, but this composition should work well, pretty much no matter what your product is. So to start off, we'll make the uh, scene around it, the floor, wall, and podium. So for the floor, I'm gonna go to edit, add geometry, and add in a ground plane. Double click on the floor, and we'll change the material type from ground to diffuse, just so we can see it. Back in the scene tree, I'm gonna select that ground plane, go to the properties tab, and call this floor. Now we can right click, duplicate the floor, I'm going to use one of my uh, rings here, and if I hold shift, I can lock it to 90 degrees, as you see there. And then I'm just going to move it back a bit away from the vase. Okay. Again, in the properties tab for this new piece of geometry, I'm going to call this wall to keep things organized. And then we can focus on bringing in the podium. Now, you can model a podium of your own in 3D modeling software, or you can go to edit, add geometry, and add in a shape from there. I'm gonna bring in a cylinder uh, just so um, we can keep things within Keyshop. Now, you wanna make sure the scale button is enabled so you can scale things up with the move tool. I'm gonna to scale my cylinder down first and then position it so it's basically on top of the vase. That way I can get a good idea of the scale of my podium. So it needs to be a little bit larger than that. Bring it up. Uh, I'd say that's about right. When you're happy with the scale of your uh, podium, I just need to scale mine vertically up a little bit more. You can click snap to ground and then click OK. Uh, we're going to call this again in properties podium. Now we can go to the vase, go to the position tab, use the move tool and bring this up above our podium. When you've got the vase above the podium, i.e. it's floating above, you can click snap to lower object and drop it on there. Now you just need to make sure it is somewhat centered on that podium. Okay, let's move on to setting the camera. Now we've got all of our geometry in the scene. So over to the camera tab, we'll make a new camera. I'll call this vase main. Set camera target, make sure that model is selected and then click your product. And then we can Click the green tick and zoom in. So I'm going to enable a quarters grid. I want to make sure that my camera is normal to 
the wall that we've dropped in. So I'm going to change my azimuth value to 90. Then it's up to you whether you want to drop your camera lower. I think a bit of inclination down looks really good for this. So we're looking more up at the product. And then I'm just going to zoom in so it's a little bit larger in the frame. Okay, when you're happy with that, turn your grid back to none and then enable depth of field. With depth of field enabled, you can then click the crosshair, select what you want to be in focus. So I'm going to click the front of the vase here, then click done. And then I'm going to increase my f-stop value up to 1.8. A 1.8 aperture lens and a 50mm lens is pretty low aperture. You can go slightly lower than 1.8, but lenses that do that become more rare and more rare and will give very, very blurry backgrounds and a very shallow depth of field. When you're happy with the camera, save it and lock it. The camera now won't move and is uh, locked in place. Okay, so now we can work on the lighting, moving on to the next chapter of this tutorial. We are going to use an area light to light this scene, not HDRI. We're going to get better highlights, better shadows, and just more realistic lighting all across the board by doing this. One area light will be enough to create a really dramatic, moody scene, which is what we're going for in this tutorial. So, some geometry to add this to. We'll go to Edit, Add Geometry, and add in a plane. And because our camera is locked, we don't want to be moving around the scene to position it. So we're going to click O on the keyboard to bring up the geometry view. This is the best way to position lighting, okay? If you're using physical lighting, because it means we can exactly see the cause and effect of that lighting. So back in the scene tree, you want to select your newly created plane and use the move tool, which is this three-way arrow button in the geometry view. I'm going to rotate it round through 90 degrees using shift again, bring it up off the ground, and then bring it to the side of my vase, trying to make sure that I don't bring it into the right-hand side or left-hand side of the frame. Before we leave the geometry view, I'm just going to hide it for a second. We need to get a material onto this plane. So go to your material library and search for area light, just area. We'll use the second one in there, which is Area Light 1200 Lumen Neutral. And because my plane isn't visible here, I need to drag it either onto the geometry view or over to my plane in the scene tree. Now that plane is an area light. The reason we can't see it is because we've still got HDRI lighting from the startup environment active in this scene. So I'm going to go to the environment tab, over to the HDRI editor, Change the background to be a solid color and then make sure that color is black. Okay, that will turn off all the lights in the scene, but it means we can add more pins in on top if we need to, and they will still have brightness to them. Back in the scene tree now, we can start to bring up the power of this plane. So I'm going to double click on the plane part, increase the power. I'm going to increase it by a factor of 10, bringing the power up to 12,000 lumen. And then I'm going to untick apply to back of geometry so that we only get light firing in one direction towards the vase and not wasting it out the back. Okay, so now we can go back into the geometry view. You can hit O on the keyboard if you've closed it down. And again, with scale enabled, I'm going to scale this plane and do the final position tweaks to get it how I want it. Now, because this product is quite tall and thin, I'm actually going to match that with our plane. And because we're in CGI here, it doesn't really matter how we go as long as we get the desired result. So I've made my plane thinner and longer, and then I'm going to make those final positions, bringing it slightly close to the wall, and bringing this reflection uh, more to the right of the product. Already, this is looking like a fantastic render, but we're not done yet. So next up, we can focus on the material of the podium. So double click on your podium. And we're going to change the material, I think, to metal. Of course, you can go with whatever material you want. But in this case, change the material type to metal. Bring up the roughness. I'm going to go with 0.2 so that it's not too shiny and detracting away from the product. And then change the color. And I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool to select a color on my product. Of course, play around with it. See what works well for yours. But that brown, I think, works really, really well um, in this case. 
Okay, now we can focus on the backdrop. So double click on the backdrop. We'll come back to this at the end. However, I would just change the material type now from diffuse to plastic and then bring the roughness up to 0.6. Okay, it's going to work almost like a satin paper like this, like a satin roll. Diffusers don't have quite as good reflection calculation. Um, so I think it's always best to go with a plastic in these situations. Almost there. Let's move on to the lighting and environment now. Sorry, the lighting and the um, image editing. So the lighting tab next. By default, Keyshot is in basic mode. For some renders, that's absolutely fine, depending on how complex they are. However, because we've got an area light in here and because we've got a real backdrop, I'm going to change it to product, which is going to improve the lighting calculations in this scene. And most importantly, enable global illumination, uh, which is important for um, for lighting the scene realistically. Next up, we can move to the image tab where we're going to do some image adjustments in here to make it pop and get that high contrast dramatic feel. So I'm going to change it to photographic mode where you get more control. We want high contrast, so I'm going to change the response curve to high contrast. Then I can increase the exposure. Okay, looking, we don't want to make anything blown out and white, but we definitely can make these things bright. Uh, I don't think we need to introduce more contrast here it all looks good to me but when you go into high contrast and increase the exposure you normally get more vibrant colors now in my case I'm going to turn these down by enabling color and then bringing down the vibrancy slider I don't want to overduce the colors um, but I do want to make it pop okay so that's the lighting scenario done that's the image style done the lighting mode done now you get to play around with the colors and materials or the CMF as we call it so just for example, the backdrop, if you double click on it, you could go for, for example, a dark backdrop for a really dark, moody, but high contrast shot. We could go for something that's light and bright, which would be great for more of a catalog shot. Or you can be bold and audacious and go for a really vibrant block color, uh, like in my case, orange to make your render stand out from the crowd. Really encourage you to play around with the CMF in this scene um, to find what works well for your design. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed that tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something. If you have, give it a like. And if you're not subscribed already, please get subscribed so you don't miss out on any more of my lighting or key shot tutorials in the future. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.